Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today we're going to be looking at custom crops and how to make them. Uh, we're going to be doing a tomato plant and just working on a couple stages for this project. Uh, I will leave an updated video link if I need to update the video in the description so definitely check there if something's not working properly and uh, let's get to it. So the first thing that you want to end up doing is going to your textures tab under your workspace and importing uh, as many stages as you want for your plants and you're going to want to import the block textures and the um, seed texture as well as a food texture. Uh, we're going to be starting with the block textures. Uh, I noticed that because I used this workspace for the same names and stuff, it ended up um, just uh, masking the texture icon a little bit different. It still works fine though. I just had to save it and um, exit after. But uh, yeah, so uh, after you import all your blocks, make sure to import your seed texture and finally your food texture. And we're just gonna move on to items now and select tomato, this is our food texture and import our seed texture so the next thing that you want to do is create a new element for plants so give your element something like a tag at the beginning and the element name, so we're working with the plant element and the name of the element. So like we're going to be doing a tomato plant stage zero, so we're just going to call it tomato plant zero and select plant. You want to import your texture and select crop and then you want to select one for maximum height, select the growable plant type radio button and give it a GUI name. So I'm just gonna say tomato plan and select not in a creative inventory. And I'm just checking to make sure that the texture is the right one. And move back. And then you wanna change the sound to plant. And uh, we'll get back to the custom drop, but uh, for now, Make sure that it doesn't spawn on any chunks, so frequency on chunks to zero. And that's good. We're coming back to edit this in a little bit though. So just click next and next. All right, so the next thing that you need to do is create your seed texture. We're gonna be using that in the blocks later on. So uh, do Northwest or whatever your tag is for your mod and then the item uh, element name and then your actual element name. So we're gonna call it tom tomato seeds. Select your texture and give it a GUI name. And then what you want to do is, uh, depending on what it is, you might want to select your creative tab, but miscellaneous is fine. And set the can drop as grass seed to 10 and check the box. So now that we have our block plants in and our seed um, item in, we can work on the food item. So again, um, just give it your tag, the element type, and then the element name. And then click food, okay, and select your food icon, and give it a name for the GUI and I would leave the tab the same and just click next and next. That should be good. So we'll be working on procedures next. So first thing that you wanna do is create your tag for your mod and then type procedure for the element type and give it a name for tomato seeds. This will be uh, the tomato seed uh, procedure that we're gonna be working with. So first thing you need is an if statement and put that under the 
uh, main box and then you're going to need a operator so select that type of operator you're also going to need a minecraft component so select the corresponding co component select um, farmland for the block click OK and then you're going to need to get block at and then that parts all set up so now that you got that part set up you need a place block element you want to select your first stage of your block uh, or plant and then you want to remove Y go to math and select the operator there put Y in the first slot and then select a number and set that to 1 drag that back into Y and we also need to remove the item from the player's inventory so if they have seeds they'll be using the seeds anyway so just put the seeds there and it'll remove one seed so you're gonna have to create um, a procedure for every crop stage minus the last one so first off um, you want to do your tag the type of element and then your stage so tomato plant zero will be your first stage and then click OK and then you want to add an if statement so first thing you want to do is world data and bring over one for can block see sky also you want to add a um, not statement so if not and add an if statement again inside of that and then you want to go to operators and select this one and then you want uh, if light get light level at and then what you want to do is go to operators or math and set it to 8 but make sure it's on greater than and now that you have that we can actually tell it to do something so we want to remove the block and then we want to place the block of our next stage and that's pretty much all set up and we're going to copy or duplicate it and basically we're just going to change a few things we're going to remove the not statement and move it in there we're going to set the greater than five and basically what's going on here is if the uh, block is can't see the sky then it will get the light level and if it's greater than eight then it will remove block and place block and it's basically the same thing it's just checking if there is sky if there is sky then it will execute that but it will, the light level is less this is the same light level as minecraft uses so now you want to update your uh, stages from 0 to um, I believe two uh, if you have four stages but all the way up to the last stage but not the last stage first off we need to change the custom drop to seeds we're just gonna have one seed and this is pretty much good uh, so if it's broken it will only drop seeds rather than the plant and everything else looks good you're gonna add your procedure for this first stage for the first plant and then click next and do that for every other one so for the last stage uh, we want to allow it to drop seeds as well uh, the easiest way is just to spawn a gem and um, basically uh, spawn a couple of them there isn't a number on this so you're just gonna have to duplicate it as many times as you want and click next once you get that all sorted out Next, what you want to do is edit your last stage instead, and uh, you want to check the thing, and this time you want to select your tomato food, and click next. So everything looks good, and then under one block destroyed by player, 
select your last uh, stage for your procedure and that should be good so basically what will happen is it will drop seeds and tomato plants now so the first thing that you want to do is after you've created all the steps that I've described is uh, go into your Minecraft world try to find your seeds and once you do that uh, make sure that the stages work fine so let it um, level up basically to the last stage and then what you want to do is test it to see if it will drop your um, seeds as well so uh, once it's at your last stage break it and see if you get your two seeds back and you do so that's good uh, next what you want to do is test every stage make sure that it drops every seed and that it grows fine so that's pretty much all you really need to do uh, when it comes to um, your crops and stuff so the last thing that I should mention is the procedure for the individual stages when they level up um, those are based on the vanilla minecraft system of the light level and how regular plants work um, I looked into the research of how uh, wheat grows up and stuff like that and it's very similar on the um, procedures and stuff so it should work very similar as far as the tick rate goes there's uh, no way currently to figure out how to change that to depend on how long it actually takes to grow up I tried several different methods that's why it took a little bit longer to put out this video but uh, this is the most accurate and safest way to go with uh, custom crops Thank you for watching my video guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that little silver bell for notifications. You can also go to my Google Plus page, I use that as a feed for all my new videos that I publish. If you want to go a little bit further in supporting me, uh, you can also go to my website and do a one-time donation on the donation page or you can subscribe to me on Patreon and, um, and get content earlier than anyone else on YouTube. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, definitely comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your questions or comments. And uh, if I don't get back to you right away, then I might be a little bit busy at the moment, but I will do my best to get back to as many people as I can as with uh, the time that I do have. Uh, thank you for watching my video and I hope to see you next time.